Okay, I think we could probably talk about the SM for hours. <laughs> we probably um, could. But I wanted to ask you some of the questions I've been asking other MPs, yep. pretty much about social liberalism, actually. Mm -hmm. And you've declared you are a social liberal, I think. Yep. Um, so I want to sort of uh, see if you can You're back that test up. You're going to test me. Test you, I guess. Uh, gay marriage, support yep. or oppose? Um, I don't think that's, uh, basically I support, but I don't think that should be a function of the state. I think marriage is a but function of churches. I think that the state has a role in contractual obligations, and so I absolutely supported civil unions. Basically the state's intervening at the moment and saying that only heterosexual couples can marry, so they're already need intervening, and you yeah, are saying are. Well, I th by proxy I actually, you want to support them I, I think um, that, intervening. I think that that shouldn't be the role of the state in, in heterosexual or homosexual relationships. Uh, but if it came to a confusing. vote, if it came to a vote, yeah. I would support gay marriage. Okay. But you wouldn't campaign for it, the no, state. No, I think there's more important things for the marriage. state. No, uh, well, I think the status quo probably people are reasonably content with. And I would actually say that I've always had this view that referenda, I think, should play an important part in our um, in our political system. And I don't think that 120 MPs are any better at choosing for themselves how society should be on these socially liberal issues uh, okay. than the general population. Okay, mm. but sometimes they can lead debate or at yes, least you yes, know, foster it. But you can still do that and have a referendum. Sure, I'm just not mm. sure that any of that's happening. <laughs> okay, that's no, not. Uh, what about what about um, what are currently illegal drugs? Do you have any views on the legalisation? Yes, I of? do. I do. Um, the report that came out recently from the International Committee, I thought, got it absolutely spot on. I think we should be moving towards liberalising drugs. I don't think you can do that all in one step. Um, I think you would start with the medicinal use of marijuana and gradually move out to, to the harder drugs. But what we see with the policy that we have at the moment um, is a lot of criminal activity surrounding okay. those things and that's not productive. So there's all sorts of problems and issues yep. around it, but I guess in an ideal world, 20 years, 50 years away, utopia, what would the situation be? Oh, I'd like to see liberalisation of drugs in that time. It's still a bit vague. Um, what, what about no laws about um, drugs? I think what we should focus on is the medicalisation rather than the criminalisation aspects. And so I'd move towards anything as time, given that you have to take steps, that, uh, that's yeah, how I would vote. Of course. Yeah, of course. But, but I'm not sure what your as question an is, point, Bryce. As an end point, mm. do you think there sh should be prohibitions on, um, on the use of drugs? Um, I can't see any good reason to support that, no. OK. What about um, alcohol? alcohol. <laughs> the big one. So you, yes. I mean, I, I, I guess you're not going to get a chance to vote on. No, um, sadly, this, I'm not, and I wish I was because I worry about vote? what the outcome might be. What, um, I would keep it as it is now. 18 for both. Okay. And yeah. actually, I, I think there's an argument for whether or not we have any age. Yeah. Um, okay. And I think that we haven't actually had that debate. The other thing I think we should think of is alcohol and drugs in the same category. We always separate mm. them. I think that we should look at all psychoactive okay. uh, substances together. So you might consider having a no age limit for the purchase of alcohol? Um, I would certainly be open to having that discussion, but for the, the vote at the moment is whether we go with 18, the mix, or 20, and I would definitely vote 18. What about on the question of voting age? Voting age? Should we have one? Um, Yes, I think we should, um, and I think 18 is probably about right. 18 is when you can get married, it's when you can be sent off to war, so it makes sense for it to be when you vote. I haven't given that one much thought, I have to say. Okay, so yeah. six, 16, 17 year olds shouldn't vote? I think you have to have a cut off somewhere. I mean, do you want 12 year olds voting when they probably aren't really very informed? But, you know, I mean, I suppose that raises a valid point. It's a bit like the drinking age. You have 16 year olds mm. who take a lot of mm. notice and act mm. very responsibly, and you have 65 year olds who don't, so. Okay, so you've, yeah. you've talked a bit about ACT being split on different issues. What, what about this idea of conscience votes? I mean, I, I sort of think they're a bit of a con, that they're ways of letting parties off the hook yeah, on, t on tough issues. Yeah. Um, you know, should we get rid of them? Um, I'd let society decide, actually. I'd have referenda for those things. Okay. I, uh, my point about 120 or 122 yeah. MPs as we have at the moment, making those decisions that actually probably society as a whole could make much better. I, I think you have to have criteria, you'd have to make sure that you had, say, 80-85% of people participating in a vote sure. for, to allow it to be put in place, but I think that we should look to that. Okay. Um, James has got some more audience questions. Thank you. Good, thank you. I'm Logan Ed I know you're saying one of the green, para uh, one of the parasites that my friend in the very nice green, green sweater there referred to. Can I just say that I, I wouldn't describe you that way? Well, how would you describe the sweater? <laughs> not as parasites. <laughs> <laughs> not one of my friends. Um, this this old bill really confuses me. And that, um, you know, I mean, is it about money or because it's like this? And the university said this in their submission. They said. We cannot, like, there still is a need for these services. The university has said um, 
you know, it's, we can't do it as cheaply as the students' associations, it's still going to be the same fee, it's just different people doing it. Isn't it great having students providing these services for students rather than a university? Like Sometimes yes and sometimes no. It depends how well uh, the money is spent. The bill is, isn't about money, it's about transparency and accountability. And it's as simple as that. And what we're not seeing at the moment is very much in the way of transparency and very little accountability and I think that needs to be sorted out. Students will decide for themselves whether a student association is providing the things that they value and want. If they do, they'll join and if they don't, they won't. Um, and I, I, I agree with you, sometimes students can provide things more cheaply. That's why the provision in my bill exists for the um, for for some contracting out of particular services. Some will be kept in house, some will be contracted out, and um, a well functioning governing body of a student union will decide for themselves which is smarter in the economic sense. Those sorts of decisions should already be have being made being made. On some campuses they happen, but on many they just don't. Okay. Fee gets shifted and absorbed by the university. Yep. Wouldn't that like mean that there was no transparency in any way? Yes. No, it will because at the same time as the VSM bill is going through Parliament, we've had the Education Number no. Four Amendment Bill, and that actually means that university councils are also going to have to be much more transparent and accountable, and they too haven't been living up to the ideal that they should have done. So these two these two initiatives are actually happening at the same time. So in reality, all that's happened is more power and more money has gone into the inter institutions. No, and nothing's away from happened so far. We'll see on the 1st of January <laughs> yeah. next year exactly what's going right. to happen. And what I would hope is happening is that the student organisations are already talking with the councils, the university and the polytech councils, to work out exactly how the balance is going to be. But when we talk about services, we need to be very clear. It's the university councils who already provide things like the health services. The student associations don't provide those. They're supposed to provide representation and a lot of the stuff that happens on campus as well as advocacy and welfare. So we need to be very clear about who already provides what because there's a lot of, lot of misinformation out there about who is already providing many of the services that exist on campus. Now I'm aware time is slipping away and we've still got a few more things we need to cover. Um, so God, is there a God? Is there a God? Gosh, that's a big question. I thought I was here to discuss politics. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd like to see this. I think there's somebody up there looking out for us all. So that's your yeah, agnostic, I guess. Um, no, no. I grew up in a Presbyterian household where religion was an important component, and um, that certainly has an impact. Somebody asked the question before, what has an impact on you? Yeah. It's your upbringing that does, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and no, I'm, I'm not sure. You're not sure, but but Presbyterianism has had an influence on oh, your, yeah, your politics, I think it has. and yeah, no, I think it probably has. To. Your upbringing always does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but you're not a practicing. Uh, no, no, Christian. I don't go to church every Sunday. Okay. Mm. Um, what about what about culture, music? What what music? <laughs> what do other you... things do I do? I yeah. love reading, but I never get any time to. Novels are Christmas only. Um, but so I'm looking forward when I retire to being able to do a bit more of that. Music is important. I learnt the piano until uh, okay. up to ATCL level, and I yep. still I don't play as often as I should. But so I do enjoy when you that. say retire, are you talking about post November Retire 26? Yes, retiring from politics. But you're going on to do other things, obviously. I hope so. Like what? I'll be bored. Um, I'm not sure yet, it's a bit of a mystery what I might do next. I'm concentrating on getting to November the 26th, then I'm going to have the, probably the first decent family holiday we've had in a very long time. South of France? The, no, not the South of France, probably the Marlborough Sounds. Okay. And, um, which is you know, pretty good by comparison. Yep. Uh, and then beyond that I'm not sure. Um, I, I'm exploring a few different options at the moment. I quite like the idea of sitting on a board or two. Uh, and health and education and defence have been primarily what I've focused on. So I'm sort of exploring some options in those areas at the moment. Okay. Mm. Um, I mean, what other goals do you have um, in your um, I'm not, I mean, you've got five kids, haven't you? Yes, I have. You know, yeah. Making sure that they sort of can stand on their own two feet as they move into real life is, uh, is pretty important. Um, I'm not sure really. I've focused so heavily on politics, I suppose, for the last decade uh, and slightly longer that um, I haven't thought much prior to the last few months about what next okay. for me. But there are, are certainly plenty of things so to do out there, plenty miss, of challenges. Will you miss Parliament? Um, I'll miss some aspects of politics. Um, Parliament itself is a pretty rarefied atmosphere mm. and it's important that people realise that there's a big wide world out there. I have taken the opportunity whenever I can to get out of Wellington where I also mm. live um, and make sure that I am okay. talking to people. Um, it's easy to get stuck in that whole parliamentary complex and political yeah. world and think that there's a very, have a very narrow view. Sure. Do, you, do you have 